So ABO match is something which is absolutely essential. Along with this, we also look for HLA matching. First, we are going to talk about the transplant antigen. Okay. Now, the two very, very important things which we are really concerned about when we are trying to perform a transplantation is whether there is an ABO match. Okay. So, ABO match is something which is absolutely essential. Along with this, we also look for HLA matching. So, these are the two antigens which are absolutely prerequisite. I mean, the matching of these particular, particular antigens is something which makes the transplantation possible. Okay. So, these are the most important transplant antigens which we have. Now, once they asked in the knee tests, okay, we do require ABO blood group, that's fine. But what about the RH? Like, do we really need RH compatibility? No, not really. Okay, so please understand there is no need for the, you know, recess antigen. That is RH antigen, we don't need to match it up. We do need ABO and HLA, that's it. Okay, now, moving ahead, HLA antigen is the most common cause of the graft rejection, that's fine. Now, what exactly is this HLA antigen? Let's kind of understand a bit more about it. So, when we look at the physiological function of the HLA, what is the role of HLA in our body? So, that basically acts like an antigen recognizing unit. Okay, so HLA basically acts like an antigen recognizing unit. That is what you need to understand. Now, in this, the HLA antigens are highly polymorphic. So, they have like the amino acid sequences there and they basically differ from every individual. So, until unless it is like an identical twins, there is a very high probability that the two people might not have 100% HLA match. So, the reason for this because this amino acid sequencing, they basically differ from individual to individual. So, you know, the less they differ, the more they are kind of a match for each other. So, that is what we really need to understand. Why the HLA differs? That is basically because of the amino acid sequencing. That's what we need to understand. Now, HLA can be of various types. So, it can be A, B, C and then we have others as well. But the three most important HLAs which we consider when we are trying to perform a transplantation is HLA A, B and DR. Please understand. HLA A, B and DR, these are the most important in the organ transplantation. Okay. So, when we are trying to consider the HLA, we don't consider all the HLAs. We just consider HLA A, HLA B and HLA DR. Now, how it is kind of reported, like when you perform a HLA match or something, how it is reported? So, it is reported like, let's say, 0, 0, 0 mismatch. Now, what do you understand by 0, 0, 0 mismatch? It means that at HLA A, B and DR, at all these three places, there is a 100% match. Okay. So, this is basically means that there is a complete match at all the loci, that is HLA A, B and DR. Let's say if at all the report comes out to be as 0, 2 and 1 mismatch. It means that at the locus of HLA, there is a complete match. At the locus of HLA B, there is a complete mismatch that both the loci are not matching. And at the level of the HLA DR antigen, there is one mismatch that one of the locus is not matching. So I hope you got the concept over here. So this is how they kind of can give you the reports of it. So 0, 0, 0 mismatch. It means that there is absolutely like all the locus of the HLA are basically matching with each other. Okay. Now, out of these three, like I told you that HLA A, B and B are, these are the most important antigens which we basically consider. But even out of these three, which is, what is the sequence? Like what is the sequence of importance? The sequence of importance goes like HLA DR is having the maximum importance followed by HLA B and HLA A. Now this is something which is important, which you should know. So please understand what is the sequence of HLA? That is HLA DR followed by HLA B followed by HLA A. Okay, so in this particular order of importance, the HLA antigens with respect to the graft survival. Please remember this, okay, please remember this. Now, let's talk about the HLA. So they can be either a class one and class two. Now, what is included in the class one? In the class one, this includes HLA A, B and C. Okay, now this class one, that is HLA A, B and C, where is it located? So in all the nucleated cells, like in our body, whatever the nucleated cells we have, in all those nucleated cells, we have HLA A, B and C. Okay, that is what is a class 1 antigen. What about the class 2? In this, we have HLA DR, DP and DQ. Now, where are these particular HLA situated? They are basically situated in B cells, dendritic cells and the macrophages. Please understand this point. Okay, so HLA class type A, B and C, all the nucleated cells in the class 2, that is HLA D, DR, DP and DQ, they are basically present in the kind of B cell dendritic cells and the macrophages. Okay. I hope you understood the concept. Now, let's talk about the structure. So, what about the structure? 
uh, in the HLA class 1, we have the heavy chain and the beta 2 microglobulin. On the other hand, in the HLA class 2, what we have is a alpha and the beta chain. So this is what the structure of the HLA is kind of formed. Okay, not that important. Just remember where it is situated. Okay, now is there a need to perform HLA matching in every organ or are there some organs in which we can spare this off? Like even if there is a HLA mismatch, we can still proceed with the transplantation. So please understand, if at all we are trying to perform a liver transplantation, whether you perform an HLA or not, or in other words, the HLA is match or mismatch, it really doesn't matter. Please remember this point, okay? In the liver transplantation, HLA mismatch does not confer any advantage. That's what you need to understand. Now let's talk about the heart transplantation. Does it matter? Well, yes. If at all there is a HLA match, it is definitely going to be beneficial, but it is not feasible, okay? Because we have, let's say, close to three years to perform it. So we will not have enough time to perform a, like a HLA and let's say kind of allocate the organs to a particular person. At the same time, there is a very, very limited donor. Like the donor pool for the heart transplantation is very, very limited. So these are the two factors which basically force us to go ahead with the transplant, heart transplantation even without performing naturally. If we perform it, it's definitely going to be beneficial, but it is not feasible. And that's why we tend not to perform it. Okay. I hope you got the concept in the liver. It will not have any benefit. In the heart, we are forced to kind of perform the heart transplantation, heart transplantation even without kind of performing a HLA match. Okay. I hope you got the drill. Thank you.